Hi. Um, Yammer is a new tool here at the university. <clears throat> and uh, I'd like to introduce you to Yammer and to give you some tips and tricks on, on using it, uh, some justification for why we've got it, how it's different than other systems and things like that. Uh, I find it a really valuable system. Uh, the slides are available online. The, uh, the URL is there on the page and maybe uh, Rick or Brett could type that in the chat window so if somebody wants to click on it, uh, we can uh, um, go ahead and uh, they can download them or, or access them. Have you ever asked these questions? as you experience your day-to-day -day interaction with people and do your job. Um, what? I didn't know about that. Uh, how can I get answers? I, I need answers to these questions. I need, who can I ask? Um, what's going on here? I see something happening, some construction, or is they closing down the roads? What's that all about? Uh, who can help me? I mean, I, I just got this quick question. I just want to know, is there somebody who can just give me an answer to this, somebody who knows how to use it or the program or whatever. Um, I was, uh, I'm trying to do something, how do I do it? Is there um, a way of getting that information and sharing it? Why is it done that way? <laughs> At least in an institution like ours, um, there's a lot of history, there's a lot of uh, because we had this system and this system, we had to put them together, and and people don't, if they haven't been here a while, don't understand that, and, and there isn't any place they can go to ask that kind of question. And and I've got some ideas that I'd like to discuss with somebody that I'd like to share. Have you ever asked these questions? I'm assuming that everybody here has had experience with at least some of these. <clears throat> well, Yammer, Miami.edu is for the you. It's for answering these kinds of questions, having these kinds of communications, um, some of them formal, some of them informal. Uh, it really is a strong program. If you have never used Yammer, you go to yammer.com. Page like, sh like is being displayed shows up, and there is a uh, Let's see if I can get to view my, my pointer here. This join your company's social network for free is there, and it tells you to enter your work email address. That's how it segments groups. And that's why Yammer is Miami.edu for us, because you have to sign in using your at Miami.edu address. Now there are a couple things going on with that. If you know what it is, just log in with it. If you don't know what it is, go to my UM. You probably have one and don't know about it. And on the front page of my UM, it will show you your at miami.edu address. If it shows you something else there, if it shows you an at umiami.edu address, for example, you can request an at miami.edu address and get into this. Um, I honestly don't know how to do that, but uh, I think you call um, the regular help desk number here at the university, 305-284-6565, and explain that you would like a, a, an at miami.edu alias. And, and Brett, you can probably help with this because you just changed your alias to a different one. and. Uh, uh, if, if you're still online, was there a special form you filled out, or how did you do that? Did you just call 6565? Yep. Brett says, yes, he did. In the chat window, just ask for the alias. So just ask for an at miami.edu alias. Um, and, and Brett, for example, is b.stevens2 at miami.edu and his first name is Brett with two T's and it looked like it wasn't in use so he asked for it and got it. So if you have a special name, even though you've been assigned a different one, 
you can ask for another one, and it is another one, not a different one. But that's only if you don't already have one. You probably already have an at Miami.edu. You can change it if you want, or uh, you're not really changing it. You're adding another one. You will get this thank you for signing up notice and check your email to complete registration. So I say wait for the email and follow the instructions in the email. Now, this wait for the email is what proves that you're part of the University of Miami. So if you enter in at med.miami.edu, you'll be part of that network, not the miami.edu network. And, and I'm talking about the miami.edu network. So get your alias set up, make sure it's working, send an email to it, make sure it comes into your box, and then um, then you can sign up for Yammer if you need to. And then follow the instructions in the email. They'll have you click on the link and set passwords and all that kind of stuff. Now, once you're in, the first thing that you should do in order to facilitate communication is to edit your profile. And you do that, and when I show the full page, this will make more sense, but in the upper right-hand corner, of the Yammer page, there's this ellipsis, the three dots, and you're going to click on that, and that will make this menu drop down, and you're going to go down to Edit Profile and click on that. That's it. So it's the ellipsis, Edit Profile, and I'll be talking about all these things. You're demoing them during the demonstration, but uh, ellipsis and Edit Profile, first thing you want to do. When you get to your profile, it asks you your first name, your last name, um, you get an about me, you get your job title, you get a whole bunch of things that you can put in there. And this is not being populated by the university. This is your space. And Absolutely as important as filling out all the text is setting your photo. Have a picture of yourself ready to go because that's going to appear with everything that you do. And that's part of the collaboration, that's part of the communication, is that there's a picture of you. It's like Facebook, it's like other social organizations. Um, I'm communicating with all kinds of people across the university that I know only by name and email address. And finally with Yammer, I say, oh, that's who that person is because they set their photo. So please set your photo. At the bottom of this page, there's a submit button. And then look around. And this is what I will be doing during the demo. I will show you these steps. So I'm just going to go through them fairly quickly on this page. First one is check out the all check out the all group. That is, um, it, it, it's just places that you can communicate with everybody. Uh, click on names of people, and there's a follow button that you can use to follow that button, and anything that they say that's in public um, shows up that on your home screen. You can search for people to see who else is on the system and, and then follow them or just read their quotes and stuff. You can search for groups. There are groups on the system, both public and private, and you can search for those uh, by name and uh, join or follow them. And you can create a group for your team or interest. We have one in learning platforms that we use extensively. It's private. It's just for the people who work on this team. Um, we do all kinds of stuff with it. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, or interest. We've got uh, some groups out there that are just people interested in a topic. And it can be work-related or not. The only people who are getting to it are people from UM. But it doesn't have to necessarily be UM-related. Certainly, I'm surprised that I haven't gotten a, a group on the Miami Heat. Some of the tips that I'll be showing you, there's a like link 
when you read something like it. It doesn't mean that you really agree with it. It means you've read it and you want to tell the person, kind of thank you for posting this, but do it in a very subtle way. So use the like button. Um, follow. The, whenever you see a follow button, if it's something that you're interested in, follow it. You'll get uh, home page updates. And I'll show you the home page. That's where I see everything that's happening in all of my groups or the people that I'm following. You can send private messages, just like email or anything else. And there's on a person's page, there's a send message button. I'll show you that. And there's a notifications page that controls email notices. So if someone sends me a private message, I want to get notified via email. I'm going to go into Yammer to respond to it, but I want to get notified in case I don't go to Yammer right away. So I have my notification set up to send me an email every time somebody sends me a private message. And then there are other no notifications you'll see. It's a whole page of options that we've got. Okay, so I'm going to do the demo now. If uh, anybody needs me to slow down or answer any questions or anything like that, and that includes you, Brad, welcome to uh, our virtual office hours. Um, please type them in the uh, chat window or uh, just click on the hand symbol that uh, I hear a bell ring and that draws my attention to it and I will stop and let you either type in your question or ask it on your microphone uh, for clarification. I know that it, for, where this is the first time where I'm talking about some tips and tricks, um, I may be confusing. So let's go to sharing. Let's see, I'm looking for Firefox Yammer. And there it is. So can I get a green check if you can see the miami.edu Yammer page? Okay, I got a green check from Brett. Nick, I know you can't do it because you're on your uh, iOS device. And I'll assume Brad and Rick, if you can't see the Yammer, um, give me a red check. Otherwise, I'll assume that you're on the phone or have been called away. Oh, Rick's got a green check. Good. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is the Yammer page. Now, when you get here, I said to start by going to this um, ellipsis up in the upper right-hand corner, click on it, that drops down a menu, go down to Edit Profile, click on it, and up, up comes your profile page. That has your name, your photo, and note that the photo is very small throughout this, so try to get one where your uh, head fills it up. Uh, about me, job title, department, uh, birthday, a kid's name, whatever you're willing to put out there for the rest of the university. Uh, your interests, I play the hammer dulcimer, uh, phone numbers, aim, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff there. Work and education, uh, where else I've worked, um, my education from undergraduate school at St. Olaf to a master's degree at FIU to working on a doctorate at the University of Wisconsin-Madison for a while, putting dates, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, then you submit that. That's your profile. From then on, your picture will be associated with everything and people can click on your name. There are other things here. There's a password. There's an org chart, and that's just internal. It is not part of the university's official stuff. So you can set up uh, set up the uh, org chart and uh, I apologize, I've got some stuff in my throat, but I have a mute button, so I'm trying to hit the mute button before I go to clear my throat. Uh, you can set up org charts and you can see who reports to whom and things like that. Uh, networks I can talk about. And, but down here is notifications. 
and uh, we'll be back to that when we're talking about setting up those email notifications. And this is all in the ellipsis edit profile. Okay, so after you set up your profile, I said to go and look at the all. Now the all used to be here. There's back home and there's home. I've referred to the home page. The home page is a collection of things that you're following or that um, are relevant to you. And newer communications come up to the top. So if someone replies to an old message, that comes up to the top because it's been refreshed. So this is my home page. Here, Alan Gurka, my boss, in the Academic Technologies, which is a private group, has posted something. And Michael, uh, who works on my team, responded, and Alan responded back three hours ago. So that's why that's up at the top. Here is something I posted to all company, to everybody, and Brett Stevens, Brett has mentioned in it, and uh, this is a promo of today's uh, thing about Yammer. Um, the link in it you can see is right down here, and is automatically included and previewed, and then I, Brett Stevens was mentioned because he was in the other session, so he, he comes up and his name is underlined and I can go to there. Here are my Yammer slides for today, put in the learning platforms area. So if you go through all, even as a new person, you're going to see, I'm sorry, on your home page, you may not have much when you first get there because you haven't followed anybody. Here's the all company. And these are things, this is a public group, and in fact, if you just log in, let me go back to my home page, and it says, what are you working on? And you click on that and type something in, it gets sent to all company. Because I'm not in any group right now. I just logged in, I went to my home page, I want to say something, it's going to go to everybody. So all company is the default group. So let's go back to all company. Um, here's my notice about today's event. Here's a neat Mac bundle that TUAW.com, deals.tuaw.com has out that uh, has X Mirage in it, which is a uh, system that I can reflect my iOS device onto my Mac so I can record it and stuff. It normally costs $16, but this is a free bundle. Deals.tuaw.com. I think it's still on. Uh, Brianna answered six hours ago that she had downloaded it. And uh, Sally Y is here, hasn't put a picture in, so her initials are used as her picture. Um, Uh, this is about the thing that Alan had posted on uh, a session. Um, Jamil, to all company, has posted something about uh, the value of content repurposing. Uh, Brian Barrett, a faculty member in, uh, in business, posted a question, so I posted the answer, Shane posted the answer. So that's the kind of a thing that you're going to see. And just start looking around. Some of the things will be interesting to you, or may be interesting to you. So let's say that you're interested, well, this will, I shouldn't take that one because that's me. And this thing by Lily. Lily is one of the instructional designers in the School of Business. So I click on Lily's name and up comes her page. I'm already following it, but in the upper right-hand corner, you can see this unfollow. It would normally say follow, be a blue button that says follow. I clicked on it, I get the green check mark, I'm following her. That means when she posts something, it appears on my home page. 
because I want to see what she's saying. She's somebody I listen to. That's the conversations. These are her conversations. Now, she's in a private group that I'm not part of. I won't see her conversations. But in other things, I will, in the groups that I'm part of, or in the all. all. Files, these are fi her files that she's uploaded to one of the groups. Here's a file in academic technology. Here are images that she's uploaded. You put images up. She hasn't put any. Videos, links. You often share links to collaborate, to just do things. Um, and, and these are the links that she shared to different people. ASTD meeting she went to. Um, so she's got a file up there that she uploaded of the things that made sense to her. So these are all, let's go back to the top, links that she's posted to things. And then there are events. You can also make an event. She made a, uh, an event for June 5th that uh, a week ago, or last week, where we started this ELI, Educause Learning Initiative, um, workshop. So, once I get to Lily Steiner, or Steiner, I can follow her. And there's another button that a lot of people don't know about. And it's the Send Message button. I'm on Lily's page. I click on that. And I'm now sending a private message to Lily. It tells me Lily Steiner is currently offline. But I can type in a message. And when she comes back, her inbox up here in the upper left will have a little one next to it, like my announcements does, and she'll know that there's a message they're waiting for. Her. And while I'm on that subject, uh, tricks having to do with that, there's also this online now button that pops up and shows me who's online right now. So Rick is online and Brett is online because we stay online when we're here at work. Um, Michael, who also works on our team, is online through his phone. He's got the Yammer phone app. So if I send him a message, um, you know, just click on his name, send him a message, uh, he'll get it on his phone. He can respond back straight through Yammer. No texting, no text charges, no any of that stuff. Okay, let's see. So I talked about the click on names and following people. Search for people. How do you do that? Let's go back to all company. And I can search for people up here. So if I would like to search for Brett, I start typing and it identifies. If I just have the B there, you see a lot of people there who have B in their name. At the R, I still have quite a few, E, T, T, and I've got Brett Stevens and Brett Booz. Well, Brett Stevens is the one I want to see, so I click on that, and now I'm on Brett's page. And I can see his conversations and all of that. So search for people, follow them, and if they're not online, Tell them to watch this video and get online. You can search for groups. Now, actually, groups are probably easier to do from here. If you know the name of the group, you could type it in. So we are the learning platforms. And there's learning platforms. That's the group. There's also a note in our group called learning platforms document list. I'll go through the Learning Platforms group. I click on that, and that's our group. I'm, I've joined it. I'm actually one of the administrators of it. Um, it is a private group. It is not open to everyone. You have to be allowed into it because we do our work there. If I go over to here, and I search for that by name. So if somebody tells you, join this group and gives you the name, you can just type it in. Otherwise, you can come over to the ellipsis, 
the more I think is normally how that's referred to. Click on groups. Again, you can search for groups. You can find suggested groups. I'm not sure how they're being suggested. I think they're probably being suggested by people that I follow or that I've interacted with and, and that they're in those groups. I'm not sure. Let's take a look at the Richter staff. That's a public group. Richter is our library, the Richter Library. Um, it's for staff in the Richter Library. While I work in the Richter Library, I probably wouldn't find that an appropriate group to join, so I'm going to stay out of it. Uh, managed Print Services uh, is a public group, so I could go to it, click on it, and I can join it. There it is, plus join. So I click on this join button, and I would be part of that group because it's a public group. Um, all that's been is created. There's nothing in it. There are no communication or anything. Um, and, and this happens a lot with Yammer. Somebody creates a group and then doesn't know exactly what to do and, and how to make it valuable or how to use it. So there are a lot of groups out there that, that were created and then have little or no activity. Um, ding, 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 ding. Enterprise Content Management. I have no idea what it is. I could join it. I could go over and take a look at it. But you get the idea. So you can search for groups, all groups, suggested groups, my groups. These are groups that I am a member of, that I have already joined. You can see that information technology is one of them. It has 99 members. Learning design community, it has 71. Learning design community is people doing online learning and course design and web design and all that kind of stuff. So I can work my way through these, see the ones that I'm in. I can go into them from here. I can. Um, Here's one I created, the ID Hiring Committee. We're looking at hiring an instructional designer. I was in charge of the first round of it. Or no, I'm sorry, that, that's one that I was part of the hiring committee. So the person in charge made that one. Um, so some of these are, are public. You can see there's a little lock, lock after this one, so it's private. Here's the Cato Leadership Team. Chief Academic Technology Officer. That's who I report to. So he created this, made it private, and then his leadership team, the people who report to him, are part of that. So that's how you can find groups and follow them. And finally, create groups. It, it, there's the button. Isn't that convenient? Create a new group. So you click on that, and you can make your own group. Uh, an internal group is people inside your company. You can make an external network group where anybody from any Yammer group can join it. But it is, I don't understand it yet. So um, I'm not sure exactly how to tell people how to get there or to make makes sense. I only use the internal groups. You get to give it a name. If you know of people that are in Yammer that you want to add, you can add them to the group right away. Who can view content? It can be public. That means anybody can join the group and anybody can view what, what's in it. Or it can be private, where people have to be led into the group. An administrator has to either add them here or go into the group and, and moderate it. And then you just say create group, and the group is created. That's it. And in fact, we're using right now the free version of Yammer. That is, anybody with any email address can go in, I suppose I could go into my gmail.com, and there's probably a huge Yammer group created for it. Soon, Miami.edu will be our private system, part of Office 365, integrated with our single sign-on. And anything that you do here will move over to that directly. So 
you can be feel confident about that. Next thing, last thing I want to go through are the tips. Let's go back to all company. Let me find something. What about notes and documents? Good point, Brett. I'll get to those in one second. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's one. The value of content repurposing. If I've read that three brands that show the value of content repurposing, I say, oh, Jamil, thank you. That was nice. I click on this little like button or like link, and I say like this message. And all it says is you like this. You can add a reply, text why you like it and all that, but at least it says you liked it. Jamil will get notified. These little notifications up here are the people like things or people reacted to your and comments to your stuff or, or to something that you're part of. Um, so use the like button. Like isn't necessarily thumbs up. I agree with everything in here. Like is, I read it. Thanks. Thanks for participating. And if you want to build community, if you want to encourage people to participate, that like button you need to use and you need to get other people to use it too. Uh, the second tip was follow for home page updates. Again, up in the upper left is my home page. All the people that are on this page, I'm following. Okay? All these people are I'm following or they're mine. <laughs> my, my posts appear here as well. Okay? The third tip send private messages from the send message button on a person's page. So if I read this, let's see, what did I see? I saw something from Brianna and I say, oh, I need to tell her something on a different topic. I can either hover over this and up comes send message or I can click on her name and use this send message. Either one. And that then becomes a private message to her. I can add more people up here. So if I want to have a conversation with three or four people, whatever, I can add them and uh, add people to the conversation. And then they'll all, we'll all be communicating together. It won't just be like email where each one has to hit reply to all. It's just part of a group conversation. But it's private to that group of people. And the profile notifications, and then I'll get back to Brett's question. When I talk about the uh, how we use it, there's the notifications link. Now you have to select. I've got a couple of um, of those external networks that I tried to make, and I uh, gave up on that. So Miami.edu is my network. I'm going to open that. And this is where I get to the side. Email me when I receive a message in my inbox. There's new content in my home feed. I could check that. And then any time that any of those people that I follow post something, I'll get an email notification with a link back to Yammer so that I can participate. I get new followers. So you've got all of these things that you can check off. Um, someone invites me to a group, I want to get notified that if somebody specifically invites me, I want to be able to respond. Um, <clears throat> someone requests to join a private group I administer, I want to get notified of that because I may not go to Yammer all the time, but I'd like to be responsive to those kinds of things. Uh, there's new activity in the following groups. I'm part of all of these groups, but uh, there are only some of them that I really want the activity. Uh, imaging and virtual desktop infrastructure, um, I check it every so often, but that's all. Uh, ed tech, I shut down. Because we're on the private system, or we, I'm sorry, because we're on the public Yammer, the free Yammer right now, I can't delete a group. <laughs> if you create a group, it lives on forever. 
So uh, that until we go private, then we'll be able to have the administrator go in and, and kill it. But anyway, so um, I've turned those off so that I don't see the activity. There is a post by email. I do not use it. But if I post an up, if I mail something to miami.edu at yammer.com uh, from bill.vilberg at miami.edu, apparently it will get posted. I don't know if I can specify what group it goes to or anything like that. I've never used it. I work directly in Yammer. Now, thank you, Brett, for reminding me about the notes and documents. So I'm going to go into learning platforms, which is a private group. So please close your eyes. <laughs> Um, these are the things that, that our team, there are four of us, there are four of us and our boss that are members of this group that we use to communicate. So here are my Yammer slides for today's virtual office hours. We put them on Yammer because before the session starts, Brett downloads them and puts them together and uploads them to Blackboard Collaborate. So I j just put it into there, and it's available. Uh, Brett didn't put his in because he does the putting together, so he didn't have to share them. And it was late, and he didn't need any comments or anything. You can see it's locked. It's only visible to members of the learning platform team, except you get to see it because I'm showing it to you. Uh, Blackboard World session schedule is now available. Brett shared that with that. Thus, that's an example of something that if you email it to me, I'm going to lose it. It's going to get buried in my email someplace. But here, because the way it's displayed and because we don't have that much communication and it's internal to our group, I'll be able to find it and, and take advantage of it. We are presenting a session on Blackboard Collaborate on our virtual office hours at Blackboard World. And he told us that the schedule is available and uh, we can uh, take a look at what else is, is going to be up there. Um, Oh, I updated our Google copy of the University of Miami academic calendar and uh, time to plan the winter upgrade dates. I said, note that we get one week off for Thanksgiving again, plan your vacations early. We don't get one week off, the students do, but that means many of us take the extra days. And I can like, I can reply, I can share it, and I can do more. And more includes stop following this person, view the conversation, add topics, that is, take it, bookmark it, email me, and delete it. You'll notice what isn't there is edit it. So I could delete this and repost it with the right wording, um, or I could reply, probably that would be good. We don't get one week off for students. Do. Post. So now when somebody sees it, they'll see that reply, and they can, uh, um, they can reply to it if they have questions or whatever. So uh, Brett gave me some information on, on users. We have to clean up our users on Blackboard, and I responded back to them. And this kind of a conversation where it makes an email thread, but you really want to have a record of it and see it as a conversation and have it come up to the top when someone responds, it is great on Yammer. So we do a, a most, I think, of our internal communication that isn't just a quick one-off question on Yammer. That's the conversations. Uh, there's info, which is just a description of this group, and that's just over here on the right side. There are files, and these are all files that have been uploaded at one time or another. Uh, four hours ago, I uploaded my PowerPoint slides. And in fact, if you look at the icon, 
Almost all of these are PowerPoint slides. Technical requirements questionnaire for the LPT server. Oh, uh, Michael is having a server built for um, us to put in some information on, and they had sent a Word document for us to fill out, so I put it on the Yammer and put a notice on it, and I was able to look at it. We were able to give feedback, work as a team on it, um, it just in the comments, so that he could fill it out and get it back to the people who needed it. Uh, anything else interesting here? Oh, the Academic Technology Org chart. I was at a meeting, they passed this out, and I thought, oh, I should share that with a group. So I put it up here. Uh, there are more that I can look at. That is, this isn't all the documents there, but they're in order by time. So that's the, uh, that goes back to there. And anybody that's looking for it can search for it, find it, download it, open it, whatever. Um, there are also some pull downs for these to download it, to follow the document, that is if people make comments, um, edit. In some of these cases now, you can do editing. Preview is more likely what you're going to do. And you can delete something if it's no longer relevant. We don't do a lot of that. That takes cleanup. And then come the notes. And if you've ever used Google Docs, and in fact, let me find out, uh, give me a green check if you've used Google Docs to collaborate on a document, to work on a document with someone else. Give me a red check if you haven't. And give me a purple check if you've walked away. <laughs> Sorry, I was on the phone. Okay. I know, I know. You're still doing your job. It's really wonderful. Uh, webinars and things allow us to uh, do our job while things are going on. So I just asked for a green check if you have used Google Docs to collaborate on a document with someone. Okay, and you still got your mic on. Rick. Okay, so this allows that same capability. So if I go out to the um, VOH topic list, once a week we pull this up, and here are some of the topics that we've come up with to talk about on virtual office hours. That's what VOH is. Here are Let's see, where are we? We're on June 11th. Here is June 18th, but I'll, I should change it right now because for scheduling reasons, we're going to skip next week's meeting. I click on Edit, and I can go in and I can change that to the 25th. Now, What's interesting is multiple people can edit this. And I don't know, Brett, uh, do you have the ability to pull this up quickly and go in and edit it with me? Ah, there's Rick. Okay, so Rick is currently editing it, and Brett is currently editing it. So I can see the dark blue things are things that Rick has posted. The light are things that Brett, there's Brett adding something. So I can see who's posted what, Note that most of it is mine. And as people are typing, it's in their color, so I can see exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rick's going to add something, too, just to show. Oh, and cut out. Press thing. <laughs> yes, you can have wars here. It isn't quite as nice as Microsoft Office Online or Google where you see the name or the whatever associated with the cursor. You have to actually type to see who's doing what, but uh, it's pretty close. And uh, another interesting thing is um, there is no saving. Drafts are auto-saved, but uh, somebody has to publish it to really get it out to the world. And once I've published it, nobody else has to. It's published. So those are the notes. Some of the notes that we've got in here and ideas for how you might want to use this, all of our meeting notes, every meeting that we have, there's an agenda created for it. And then during the meeting, we add material 
live on the computer, and we're all probably looking at our own computers, so we can all add stuff, uh, notes from the meetings, who said what or who made a commitment or what needs to be done and all that stuff. So each one of our meetings has a, uh, and I think we have them every other week, I don't know, uh, looks like it, um, as, a, as a note in here. Um, augment for summer 2014. Augment. Rick created that in May. Oh, this is one that has to had to be done, I guess. And and he wanted someplace to take the notes and probably get it over to uh, to Brett or so that he'd have a record of it and uh, and put it into here so that he could follow it. So you, sometimes they're just individual things that we put in. Here's our Blackboard World presentation. Uh, here's the description that we sent in, the three takeaways we gave them, and now we will be working on this, added, adding the material that we want to cover and how we want to cover it and putting together the outline of our presentation and working on it together before Blackboard World and, and before just the week before Blackboard World. So we can do that any time that we want to. This does not have the ability to roll things back. It doesn't have all the versioning that some systems have, but it's a, a great way to just work on this informal stuff, um, collaborate on it, and, uh, and get things accomplished. So I'm back to my home page. You can see I updated our Google copy of the calendar. Uh, we don't get one week off, the students do. I just added that. So that comes up to the top. The whole thread comes up to the top because the one new thing has the blue line next to it. So I can see that it's new. <clears throat> I'm told that it was eight minutes ago. And if I hover the actual time, 4.15 is there. So it really is a, a, uh, a nice system. This previously loaded means everything below that I've seen. Everything below that I've seen before. This is the only new stuff up at the top. Now, I've talked for much too long, um, but I really think this is a neat service. Uh, it probably by the end of the summer, it will be integrated with, uh, with um, Office 365. So when you type in build.filbert.miami.edu, up will come our authentication page, our Shibboleth uh, authentication page. I'll put in my username and my password to the university system, and it will send me on to the Yammer group. Right now, if I log into my Office 365 email, using mail.miami.edu is what I use to get there. And, and that's the same thing. I put in build.filberg.miami.edu. It jumps me over to the uh, UM authentication page. I put in my cane ID and password. It jumps me back to uh, the Office 365 Outlook. So once, if, if I am there, up in the top right corner, there are a bunch of links up there to SharePoint and other services that are in Office 365, and one of them is Yammer. If you click on that right now, you'll come to this Yammer, because this is the Miami.edu Yammer. Um, so it, assuming that you're using your Miami.edu Office 365, if you're using your personal one, that wouldn't happen. So I'm going to um, call it a wrap. I've talked, oh my gosh, it's almost 4.30. Um, I hope this is, has been useful. I hope that uh, I've given you some ideas. Uh, feel free uh, to go in and uh, either post to all company or send me private messages if you've got questions about how to use Gammer once you get into there. Uh, there's some great YouTube videos. Yammer has some good videos. Um, and uh, if you can't get in, let me...
close this down. There it is. My email will be on the next page, uh, but the summary of the enter, it's company-based communication. It is not public. It's not like Facebook, or it's like the original Facebook, <laughs> where all, I had to be at Miami.edu and I could only see Miami.edu people. Then they opened it up to other EDU people, and then they opened it up to the world. But right now, Yammer is, in general, company-based communication. It really encourages and supports, supports sharing and collaboration. I'm really impressed with it. Um, at the University of Miami, it's still in the startup stage. I think I actually made my account in 2008. Uh, it, it went back that far, um, but um, not many people did. And there are some groups, like the IT group, that have 99 members, but nothing gets posted into it. So uh, we're still starting it up. We're still trying to get people to use it to see how it's useful and things like that. And I encourage you to join and participate. Slides are available at the page listed. There's my email. Feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions or I can help in any way. Rick, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Bill. And uh, that would conclude our uh, session for today. Just remember, next week we will not have a virtual office hours. Uh, the next one will be on June 25th. Uh, so I uh, thank you, everybody, for coming in. Um, just before we conclude, if anybody has a question, is there anything we can answer? No? Well, thank you very much, everybody, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.